If there was a way of hooking up some cables to gamers as they undergo something like a really intense boss fight, the resulting charged vibrating energy would likely power a small city for a few hundred years. There's just nothing like it. Trying to nail a gauntlet of platform jumps, battling a raid boss for half an hour and not knowing if you'll make it through, trying in vain to end on a win at 2am before ending a Call of Duty session. There's something about being symbiotically connected to controllable action that elevates our brain function, creating a state of pure zen-like focus that can be hella rewarding or just instantly infuriating. It's the reason people smash their phones into a thousand pieces, why everyone only gives their computer a few seconds before clicking like a gibbon on the mouse, or why someone saying it's just a game makes you reach for the nearest sharp object. No, Crash Team Racing is not just a game, Jules, and it never was. In that moment, that unbridled, rage-filled, in-the-zone and never-leaving moment of purposeful, goal-winning drive, nothing is just a game. Instead, it is the most important thing to you on this earth at that given time. And for those game designers who knew exactly what they were doing, programming such satanistic works of devilry into their games, overcoming and emerging in one piece on the other side always elicits the same reaction. I am never, ever doing that again. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are 11 insanely stressful gaming moments you'll never play again. At least until the next try. Number 11, any underwater level, Sonic the Hedgehog. Literally want to torture someone with noise? Play the Sonic drowning noise. Oh god, I mean how utterly skin crawling is that? It genuinely makes me short of breath, simply because of the amount of times I've perished underwater trying desperately to grasp the next bubble of air and just choking out instead. The first time this will really get in your way is the insane highs and plummeting lows of Labyrinth Zone, a level you'll awkwardly get through if you can manage to get the path right, but if not, you'll just be drowning in the drink in seconds. Alongside the fact that you have a visual countdown to Sonic's death, you have to contend with overly floaty underwater controls, spikes, and enemies who are moving just as freely as they would on land. Also, there's that bit in Chemical Zone where you have to climb a bunch of slow-moving platforms while still underground. I mean, it's just a nightmare. Number 10, thinking you're hidden. Alien Isolation. Creative Assembly's work on the Alien franchise gave us the best Alien game of the bunch, and it's not even close. However, to give the Xenomorph a sense of unpredictability and the ability to hunt you down, its AI is actually split into two brains. One always knows where you are and the other doesn't, but receives clues from the first. This occasionally results in the Xenomorph doing a 90 degree turn right towards your formerly safe position, and before you can say Wayland yutani there's a tail sticking through your stomach. All of this is because the devs never want you feeling remotely comfortable. And even the save system can give you a heart attack as it takes 5 full seconds to activate and you can still get killed while waiting. It makes for a game you'll incrementally complete, getting skewered every so often because you are just supposed to die every now and then, gripping the next checkpoint tighter every time, vowing to never be in a room with a xenomorph ever again. Number 9, Assault, Hotline Miami. Hotline Miami is a game purpose-built to ask far more of your reflex actions than you ever thought humanly possible. And the whole experience is drenched in a fantastically punchy synthwave soundtrack that will get your blood up even before the bodies start flying. The whole game is slowly building to a revelation that points your character's crosshairs at the police force rather than the gangsters you've been hacking to pieces until this point. And so begins your attempt to break in and kill like 40 armed officers with nothing more than your fists and a mask. Needless to say, thanks to the game's previous reliance on melee weapons and bum-rushing your enemies, stepping into the line of fire gets you seared to ribbons in less than a second. It's up to you how to proceed, but if you manage to down an officer, steal his gun, and hold out popping headshots only to be blasted from across the map, well, there are no words that can accurately represent the bulk of vowels you'll scream in response. Number 8. Any You Were Spotted Restart Stealth Section Okay, this trope, this basic-ass approach to stealth has to stop. Thankfully, it's not too bad in the modern day, with most games letting you have some sort of contingency plan or method of counterattack. but there's always one that sticks out like a sore thumb. Yes, Spider-Man's MJ levels, I am looking at you. 
There is nothing cheaper than being greeted with a lame you got spotted menu screen when clearly the stealth genre and gaming overall has advanced so damn much. As for the intensity of the moment itself, it kind of feels like you're just avoiding the restart screen altogether and being in the moment trying to battle a game's outdated mechanics feels terrible. Number 7. Speeder Bike Battletoads a classic and a title completely of its time. Back in 1991, game mechanics of any platformer amounted to get from left to right, thereby making increased difficulty incredibly easy. Just throw whatever you like in the way. Developers Rare obviously cottoned onto the fact that they could speed things up in the process too, and thus the speed up bike section was born. A horrible, checkpointless dirge of pattern recognition where the only way to succeed was to remember when to go up or down and when to jump at the end. Get any one of these wrong and it was a swift trip back to the very start. There's just something about having an experience boiled down to such binary inputs that makes it all so much worse. And getting them wrong puts you in a strange state where you'll question your own humanity. Knowing that you will try again, but you'll also hate yourself for doing so. Number 6. Hitting the Train Ramp Grand Theft Auto San Andreas Wrong Side of the Tracks was one of a handful of missions that showed the game engine Rockstar first conceived for GTA 3 just wasn't really built to handle the grandiose nature of their future mission design, let alone giving you any sense of reliability behind the controls. Basically, you're supposed to jump a dirt bike onto a moving train, something that would make a return in GTA 5 when the devs finally had some weight behind the vehicle itself. Back when the bikes all handled like firecrackers with handlebars attached though, trying to aim that in any remotely specific direction just felt impossible. To make matters worse, there were no checkpoints and you had the otherwise likeable Big Smoke chastising your every move if you failed. Screaming that and say it with me, you just had to follow the damn train, CJ. Number 5. Losing to a Destiny Boss After 45 Minutes Considering the size and scope of Bungie's divisive but ultimately popular first-person shooter powerhouse Destiny, if you're in the negative camp, one of the reasons to call it a day might have been trying to fight any of the more powerful raid bosses. Now, you can apply this whole point to any overly spongy boss that just takes sheer willpower and time to defeat. The longer the fight goes on, the more you need to dig in, keep your focus, and make sure that you see it through. Because losing to a spongy boss after more than half an hour of unloading ammo and attacks into its face just makes me want to give up gaming forever. In Destiny's case, Bungie are the beholders of the finest FPS combat this side of Titanfall 2, so at least replaying comes with a side of, well, it'll still be fun to play until you win. Once you finally get that victory screen though, and I'm talking about the most over-the-top high HP bosses across the board here, that particular duel is only ever mentioned in the future through hushed whispers. Number 4. The Dark World Levels – Super Meat Boy There's a certain gaming trope associated with our beloved medium that centers around proving your gaming medal, i.e. some of us just can't turn away from a challenge. And if your friend or the general cultural response is, bet you can't beat this, that is a call to arms if there ever was one. Enter Super Meat Boy, and with just a two-person development crew, Team Meat managed to tap into that insatiable well of curiosity and challenge that the medium was built on, providing a slew of pixel-perfect levels that if you can't nail the landing or path just right, we'll have you for breakfast. Throw in the dark variations on these levels that add even more random things like spinning blades and restrictive pathways, and it's no surprise that only 0.8% of all players, at least at time of recording, actually finished them all. Number 3. The Closing Seconds of Every Dark Souls Boss Fight Life bars might be somewhat symbolic of arcade gaming or the old school, but from software unwittingly tapped back into the psychological effect of visualizing your victory one centimeter of health at a time. Because sure, you can manage your own health, but knowing exactly how well you're doing and how close you are to this hell being over is so ludicrously effective. Studio MDHR would do something similar by letting you know how far off the end of a level you were in Cuphead after dying, and it'll have you pushing the restart button in seconds just for one more go. Back to Dark Souls though, and I'm gonna highlight the iconic Ornstein and Smile fight. Everyone has that one fight in this game they really struggled with, and mine is this by a country mile. Souls combat is not the most responsive, and when you're half battling the camera, locking onto two characters that can move faster than you, and dealing with the fact whoever you kill first ends up buffing the second character, even if you scrape through the first half of the battle, you'll likely get taken out by some screen filling attacks and have to restart the whole thing again. The feeling when you eventually overcome this is second to none, but even approaching the thought of having to do it all again, that's kinda genuinely sickening. Number 2. Every Chase Scene – Assassin's Creed 
If you caught E3 back in 2007, you might remember the footage of Assassin's Creed's Altair bolting through a city, only to leap and crash down on his target. It looked genuinely fun, and for a time, it totally was. Sadly, Ubisoft just didn't know when to quit while they were ahead. And every Assassin's Creed became littered with hold forward till you win style chase missions, where you're left to the mercy of an animation system that didn't know which surface should take priority. Main characters dart up the wrong wall or surface, and even on rooftops, they'll just fling themselves off in the opposite direction at the worst possible time. This was a massive design flaw that culminated in Assassin's Creed 3 having one of the worst final missions in gaming history. Thankfully though, after Black Flag did a bunch of in-game post-mission consumer feedback forms, yes really, we all said, hey, can you just not, leading to a much better Assassin's Creed product in the newer titles. And number one, the eye surgery machine. Dead Space 2. I adore the whole thought process around creating the next big iconic horror set piece, be it in game, movie, or elsewhere. And while it's not as popular as the window breaking dogs in Resident Evil, Dead Space 2's eye surgery machine is terrifying. Every single thing about this is as stressful and cringy as it gets. From the idea that you're controlling a needle that needs to go through Isaac Clarke's pupil, to the assumed ramifications of what'll happen if you don't get it right, to the series already having a love for body horror and all things gory and gruesome. Yes, this sequence can go wrong, and yes, the results are every bit as stomach churning as you might imagine. Once you make it through with both of Isaac's eyes intact though, I'm gonna say that nobody was in a rush to see this scene ever again. And those are my picks for the most stressful scenes and moments in all of gaming. Let me know your picks down in the comments below, and please check out the What Culture Gaming podcast. For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com, and I'll catch you soon.